Hello everyone, welcome to Fire Engineering Training Minutes. I'm Jason DeFossi along with Dale and Zarman and we're excited to present electric and hybrid vehicle response specific to firefighting operations. Dale is going to walk us through the different tools and equipment and approaches as it relates to this unique firefighting operation. Thanks Jason. We want to take a minute to talk about primary assessment and scene survey. When we come off of the rig, the first goal is to identify that we have an electric or hybrid vehicle. Logos, badging, the presence or lack of exhaust pipes, nose cones, the lack of air intakes, all those things are strong indicators that we are in fact dealing with a hybrid or electric vehicle. As we approach the vehicle, we want to make sure that we approach from the sides of the vehicle or at 45s. If we see any primary indications of a thermal event, sight, smell, or sound being our primary indicators, we want to recognize those and put those into play. With sight, any indications of visible gas or vapor coming from the vehicle, any signs of visible arcing, with sounds, buzzing, popping, or hissing. And with smell, any odorant that smells like an electrical burning odor mixed with a fruity, sweet odor are strong indicators that we have a developing thermal event. If those are present, our primary assessment and focal point needs to be clearing the victim from the vehicle. So it's imperative that firefighters don't get sidetracked by the existence of an EV or hybrid or sidetracked by the presence of a developing thermal event and forget about the paramount issue of identifying victims and preparing to do rapid extrications. Additional tools we can use to have early recognition of a developing thermal event are four gas meters and thermal imaging cameras. When using our four gas meters, we're focused on carbon monoxide. As approaching the vehicles, our levels that we're going to see may not be accurate indications of what we're looking at. The primary gases emitted from a battery pack are hydrogen, carbon monoxide, and carbon dioxide. The CO sensor in your four gas meter is cross sensitive to all of those gases. If you see any values in your CO reading and you don't have active combustion vehicles in close proximity or combustion power plants producing CO, you should not have CO. So when approaching the vehicle, if your CO levels are increasing, presume that you have a developing thermal event. If you couple that with the affirmation of sight, smell, and sound, that's an immediate strong indicator of thermal presence. With your thermal imaging camera, you can recognize vapor before your naked eye can see it in many cases. So always do a full 360 of the vehicle utilizing your thermal imaging camera. If you do see vapor present, hone in on that location. That location is the vent pathway that the battery has created or that is engineered in the battery pack and will become one of your primary assets in gaining cooling efforts to the interior of the battery pack. So ensure that these two tools are in the presence of an operator on the scene. Ensure that you're guiding the crew appropriately according to what you see, what you smell, and what you hear, and what you recognize on your instruments. If you have any affirmations of a developing thermal event, immediately retreat from the scene, don full protective ensemble, including SCBA, and then reinitiate your tactics. That's awesome. What's going to happen next is the team is going to demonstrate those approaches and the tools used for rapid extrication. Now that the primary assessment's been completed using our thermal imaging and gas detection tools and using sight, smell, and sound, the team has determined that the vehicle is off-gassing, we have a party trap, and we must perform a rapid extrication assignment. Dalen's going to walk us through what needs to be done for those initial tasks. 
Thanks, Jason. So primary objective is to push the vapor and gas and potential fire conditions away from the access points and the victim. We also need to make sure that we cover our foundational pieces, those being primary wheel chalking and points of stabilization. From this point forward, all firefighters need to be in full PB, including SCBA. We need to have a line on the deck, and that line needs to be a combination nozzle. The combination nozzle affords the nozzle the ability to navigate between fog patterns and straight stream patterns to properly hydraulically ventilate as well as apply cooling streams to the fire. The nozzleman needs to lead the entire team to the vehicle. With the nozzle being in place in front, as the gases develop, it's important that we remember that they can quickly flash. So gas production can be one to five liters of gas per watt hour of the battery pack. That presents a significant vapor flash potential. We don't want to expose any first responders to that target area without the nozzle being in front of them. When approaching the vehicle, we want to position our nozzle so that we can protect the victim. If the victim is our driver in this situation, the nozzle is going to come in from this side. It's important that that line that's on the deck has a combination nozzle. We want the nozzleman to be able to negotiate between fog patterns and straight stream patterns. Use traditional firefighting tactics. So if we have a high volume of fire, go to straight stream, knock the fire down, and then as you approach the vehicle, you can open your pattern up into a narrow fog pattern or a wide fog pattern to hydraulically ventilate the vapor and push it away from the target zones. We can't forget or abandon our primary fundamentals for vehicle access either. We'll need to have our wheel chocks and our points of stabilization prepared and ready to approach the vehicle as well. When we position our wheel chocks, we want to place those on the opposite side of the vehicle. Our points of stabilization will go on the primary side of the vehicle where we're approaching the victim. We're going to step out now and let our firefighters perform that primary sequence. Let's talk about the nozzleman's responsibilities now for the rapid access. The nozzleman is going to switch over to the victim's location. He's going to use that fog pattern to push the vapor and fire behavior away from the victim and away from the hinge line on the door. We want to avoid latch attacks because of the brittle nature of door skins on modern EVs. So we're going to use our fog pattern and we want the left boundary of the fog pattern to be just in front of the hinge set. That'll allow your spreader person to come in and engage those hinges and do a quick separation on the door. So again, we can knock down with straight stream and as we approach, open up into fog pattern. The nozzleman is approaching, he's getting a knockdown. As he advances, he's gonna open up into a fog pattern, create access pathways for the two wheel chocks to be positioned. It's great protection. For the rapid access sequence with the spreader, the spreader operator is going to open the tips so that they're adjusted to about the locations of the hinge sets. Once the tips are at that opening, we're going to approach the fender and we're going to strike the fender with the tips of the spreaders. Remember that time is of the essence in this sequence. So we're moving with very quick techniques and limited personnel in the vapor zone. As soon as we strike the fender, that will expose the two hinge sets and then the spreader operator will stay right behind that water curtain and he'll separate the hinges from the vehicle. On modern EVs, again, just like the latch, we want to avoid skin contact on the door panels with the tips. We want to make sure that we get what we call hard touches. So as soon as the hinges are exposed, locate your tips so that they are touching the hinge mechanism and the structural part of the A-pillar. Separate the upper hinge, drop the tool immediately down, separate the hurricane bar, and then drop down again and separate the lower hinge. As soon as all the hinges and hurricane bars are separated from the A-pillar, we're going to reorient the tool, we're going to crush the door to get a squeeze on it, and we're going to use the tool as a lever to open the access pathway to the victim. 
as we walk that door open, the primary line will keep that, that fog pattern ahead of the spreader operator, and we're going to bring in a secondary line just as a backup in case vapor or fire start to develop in the gap. We're going to push that away from that zone, and then our rescuers can enter in the gap between the two lines and pull the victim out of the car. Once you have that opening, our operators will strike the fender. That's going to open up this access point to the upper hinge and the lower access to the lower hinge, and then we'll initiate our touches. Nozzle pattern is being applied to create access to the fender into the hinge line. Spreader man comes in, creates the initial gap. As soon as the upper hinge is exposed, he's going to go for hard touches on the hinge set, pop or fracture that upper hinge, and then he'll work down to the hurricane bar. The primary pattern is using a Venturi air draw effect to try and train all that vapor away from the hinge set and away from the window gap we're creating so that the victim has a relatively clean air space. As soon as the last separation is made, the spreader is going to clamp the door and then he's going to let the nozzleman know he's ready to move. As the door is open, the fog pattern will move ahead of the door and he's going to flex the door open like a lever. Rescuer comes in, grabs the victim and pulls the victim from the vehicle. Backup line was in place to create the other side of the water protection. As demonstrated by the team, our rapid extrication assignment was successful. Some of the techniques used were very aggressive, but this is the type of techniques that are required to quickly gain access to our victims in one of these EV thermal events. Dalen? Just don't get tunnel vision. It's easy to get sidetracked as firefighters over the fact that it is an EV, over the fact that we have a developing thermal event. We cannot lose sight of our victims. The victims drive the rescue sequence. We want to make them the priority, and we want to take the necessary measured risks with intelligent tactics to gain access to them and get them out of those hazard zones. Thank you for watching Fire Engineering Training Minutes.